Good afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of Cold Classic Movies. Uh, this week, our feature movie, and uh, we're looking back in time and we go all the way back to the archives of 2003 for Comedy Gold, a real sort of hit comedy movie, National Security 2003, featuring the Martin Lawrence, Steve Zahn, Colin Fuhr, Bill Duke, and the one and only Robin Lee. And I'm delighted today to be joined by the, the main uh, female uh, cast member of the show, uh, Robin Lee, who played the role of Denise in National Security. And I suppose uh, 2003, 17 years ago for you, uh, Robin, uh, on the set of uh, National Security, I suppose when you did that movie at that time, was it just another movie for you? Uh, was it just another sort of opportunity, another sort of script? Uh, what it might come to something, it might be talked about, who knows, but 17 years on, the amount of reruns of national security every single year on every sort of TV station all across the world, it's sort of people still laughing at the movie, even to this day. Uh, you still get chuckles or laughs when you watch it back yourself. I do, I do. I saw it recently, like maybe a year ago or two years ago, with my kids, just parts of it with my kids. And it was so bizarre to see something that you haven't been a part, you were, it was a huge part of your life and then you haven't watched in years and years and years. And to revisit that and remembering all the moments and then watching them watch it for the first time, it was really, it was quite a laugh. <laughs> but it was, um, you know, it was my first big studio film. So it's not something that I, it's not like, oh, this little movie I did. I'd, uh, I just moved to Los Angeles um, and I'd done some independent films prior to that back east from New York, where, which is where I'm from originally. And I'd done some TV and some commercials, but this was my first studio film. And the irony of it was I was the first person who read for that role. I was a first audition for yeah. any cast member for that film. And I did it and I, I thought I did a decent job, but then like forgot about it. And I didn't hear from them for about like a month later. Like it, it was a long time. It was like, oh, it's down to you and one other actress. And I was like, wow, <laughs> like I'd completely forgotten about it. Um, and so because it was my first studio, I had to like go back in and then I had to do like screen tests and they wanted to make sure I, I could be sexy enough. So I had to send them sexy pictures, um, <laughs> which is a typical Hollywood type thing. Uh, but when I got it, I was really excited. Like I, I knew Martin's work. I mean, I was familiar with, with Martin Enstey's work, but I'd, I'd met or I, I had friends in common with Martin, but I'd never met Steve. And I went over to the, uh, to the lot where they were shooting maybe a week or two before I actually started shooting when they'd already begun, but my character hadn't been introduced just to kind of meet with Steve and kind of like talk a little bit about our backstory and to get a feel for each other. And he was so lovely. He was delightful. I, I could not have chosen a better co-star for that welcome to Hollywood moment because he was just the nicest guy. And I'd come home every day from shooting and uh, I was engaged at the time to my husband now. <laughs> and, I would, and I would just be like, guess what Steve said? Guess what Steve did? Guess what Steve? <laughs> and he's like, okay, just tell me more about Steve. <laughs> so it was really, it was really lovely. He could not have been nicer. And the scenes with Martin, I mean, you know, you, you, I remember learning in an acting class when I was like 12 or 13 years old, I was quite young. And I had this one teacher who would ha have us do this exercise. Where we had to stand straight in a row and kind of like stare straight ahead. And he'd come up and do things to you and try to make you laugh. And you couldn't laugh. And like the last person standing was like the winner of the, of the contest or whatever it was. Um, and working with Martin and Steve was like that. Like, you can't laugh, you can't ruin the takes, you can't, <laughs> but, but they are, <laughs> They're like, the, sometimes the crew is laughing and you can see them kind of like juggling, they're holding up the boom, but they're kind of like trying not to shake. <laughs> it's like, um, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was a lovely introduction to Hollywood and it was a lot of fun. You mentioned that sort of fun and you mentioned uh, your uh, partner in the movie, uh, Steve uh, Zane, yes. uh, playing his girlfriend at the time. And to look at you, uh, it was almost like, um, what would I say, sort of um, Jekyll and Hyde. You, you just couldn't pair two sort no. of <laughs> characters. 
ever. He was so sort of non-talking, one mutter, one or bear sort of two words uh, right. come out, out. And even to see the shock on um, Martin's uh, character, Earl, when he saw the shock. Right. <laughs> disbelief even to himself like you know exactly exactly and i think it was like the surprise like the, the, they're not expecting this this is a girlfriend um so it was a lot of fun and it was it was it was a great laugh we had, we had a fun time yeah and i suppose uh robin there's so many iconic scenes in that um movie and i suppose the bumblebee scenes are always sort of famous and uh you you were involved in the second uh, part of the the bumblebee sort of right, thing, right? When this sort of character is trying to mimic a sort of scene like that, an imaginary sort of a scene right. like that, and you're standing there and you're just watching that, right? And you're just kind of you're following the bee, and then you're you're and you're yeah. watching Martin's character lose his mind, and <laughs> and that moment of epiphany that maybe he did make this, maybe you didn't beat him. <laughs> myself that, uh, in terms of I'm sure you didn't get that on the first take kind of a no that was a, we had several takes of that one I'm trying I'm trying to remember this is so long ago I'm trying to remember back we shot in this cute little bungalow in Hollywood um and there were several takes several because you know Dennis wanted to get it right and Martin's kind of slapsticky and so it was kind of getting the everything to kind of congeal you know like to just capturing the right moment well, I suppose it's a comedy movie that sort of tells the story as well. And it's very sort of easy to follow on. Uh, right. What uh, national security good is. You're not sort of guessing. You get the sense of the movie right from the uh, the go. And even the start, I know um, the, he loses his partner, uh, Charlie. Uh, in, sorry, yeah. But even it's sort of PG. It doesn't almost feel like murder or sort of such. Right. In that sort right. of way. It's like, like light light-hearted even though a terrible tragedy has happened right you just don't feel that feel sense of loss or that see emotional or anything like it yeah it's it's that you know that quintessential buddy comedy buddy buddy drama buddy comedy i guess it is um and cop and a cop buddy draw com comedy which always like i don't know it's like a built-in audience people love that stuff so they I just kind of you work together well and it and they had that on-screen chemistry and it was just they just kind of wrote it out it was great i suppose uh robin in terms of uh working on set and i suppose working with uh martin lawrence and working with a uh, sort of speech scene i suppose a first time uh you're such a big sort of product uh first big project for you in terms mm -hmm. of that i suppose these are two established stars with real massive resumes, real sort of body of work. Did you feel like that you were taken under the guidance of two real sort of good uh, male sort of co-stars that were able to help you settle into the role very quickly and make you feel at home? Um, I felt that from Steve for sure, because I spent more time with him. I didn't spend as much time with Martin not on camera. So I didn't, I didn't have like that bonding moment with Martin. But I felt like if I could make him laugh, then I'm doing my job. And if I can hold my own against him and, and not let him make me laugh when I know I'm not supposed to be laughing, then, then I'm doing my job well. And, it's, and it becomes kind of like a, a volley. Like I think of like acting in a scene with a talented partner as like a playing tennis. Like you, you, you volley the ball and they send it back and you just kind of, you can't miss it, you know? Um, and I feel like when acting is going really well, it feels like that. And it felt like that with them from the beginning. And so that kind of gives you the confidence. Like, I know what I'm doing. I know why I'm here. I know why I have this part. And you just kind of, you kind of get to trust in yourself. You can't second guess yourself. If you second guess yourself as an actor, especially on set, you'll lose it. Everything will just kind of fall apart. Um, and so I think very early on, I learned like you go in there and, and you just kind of trust that they hired you for the reason for a reason you're the best person for this part and that you can handle whatever they throw at you and so that's that's kind of what you got to do <laughs> and i suppose that uh, robin in terms of your first sort of major product project in, in sort of hollywood what a sort of project to 
start off in and I suppose it's probably one of those dream sort of early sort of projects that probably comes around the, the right time and they've always come off a, a movie like National Security with sort of a great sort of buzz and say yeah I sort of made the right move I made the right sort of decision here and hopefully every project is just as good as this one. Right right I did and then I and then I had I had the opportunity to work with some great people right after that like in a row I did Deliver Us from Eva with Gabrielle Union and LL Cool J. And then I did 13 Going on 30 with Jennifer Garner. And then I did Hitch with Will Smith. Um, and and that those all happened like in sequence and a kind of, you, 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 you kind of get what you're good at. You know what you bring to the table and you, and you learn to work with other actors and, and kind of feel them out and it's it's always a new experience and you just kind of hope that you all get along on set and I've been really lucky to have worked with some really talented people who are also very kind and generous as, as actors and so it, it kind of like that really got the ball rolling for me. I suppose Robin you mentioned you were on set and I, suppose, I presume most predominantly you were on set for your own themes uh, just in terms right. of movies. Yeah. Well, obviously then the first reaction you get to see the, the finished product is paid back to you for the first time. You get to see the scenes that your character wasn't involved in. Are right. you sort of looking back or you sort of going back? And especially when you see the first scene of the, the bumblebee uh, between uh, scene between Steve and uh, Martin's sort of character <laughs> snatching at the car and the windscreen. Uh, what was your dinner? Could you keep it together inside the first time? Um, yeah. it, it, you know, it's funny because I, I can't even remember the the first time because you go and you do ADR right which is when you go into like a sound bay and you edit like you clear up any lines that might have gotten jumbled and so when you're doing that you're seeing your scenes and so I got to see my scenes before I got to see the entirety of the film and that was very funny like seeing them for the first time and seeing them you know you're there with the director and, and Dennis is cracking up and and it was great and then we had the premiere and it was like it was awesome. It was a great turnout, and people loved it, and were laughing hysterically. And it was it was great. It's great, but it's kind of it's it is always interesting to see the full picture because you you know you've read the script, but you only shoot your stuff, and so you don't know how it's all going to come together on the screen. And it, and it's always a joy and like a, a a bit of a surprise and a joy to see it the first time. And that premiere, when it came out, I imagine it was hectic times for you back then in terms of a real sort of blockbuster movie. Yeah, that. back then they were still doing big premieres. Like, they, they, things have gotten, they've gone back and forth in Hollywood. They've gotten a little bit smaller, but it was a big premiere and a big after party um, in Westwood. And we had big celebrities come out to see it because at that point, I think Martin and and Will Smith had started shooting Bad Boys 2. So Will Smith came to the premiere and that that's a whole big thing. Um, so it was great. It was really great. And Robin, in terms of that uh, time when it came out, what, did you find your schedule going through the roof in terms of TV appearances, being wanted for chat shows, having to do uh, guest spots in media, radio, interviews, all that time? Was it a real hectic time in your life after the movie came back? Did it start to startle you a bit in terms of how much you were in demand? Right, it was, it was hectic also because I had um, Delivers from Eva came out, I wanna say like three weeks later or two weeks later. So I had a lot of press going on and junkets and everything in that time. And that was all, that was all between like January, February, January and February of 2003. It was really quite busy for me. And I suppose, uh, Robin, uh, when you sort of, you mentioned there about seeing a uh, national security uh, back again, I remember seeing it two years ago with your kids and they're sort of watching the sort of movie and sort of stuff like that. In terms of fan base, and I suppose the movie has a fan base, you still sort of get recognized or saying, in that the lady that was in national security, in that the guy who played, um, yeah, uh, our friend of Steve Zane, or your character is sometimes maybe Denise, they call you Denise instead of Robin. Does that happen a lot? Robin, and I get I get recognized for different things all the time and you never know who's watched what. And so I never assume, but every once in a while, someone will be like, national security. I'm like, how do you remember that? They're like, we were just watching it the other night. And I, got, I also got recognized for it somewhere very, I'm, I'm trying to think it was like random. I feel like I wasn't in 
the United States. I might have been in London or I can't remember. I was traveling and I and I got recognized. And you don't realize like how far your films travel and that you've got this audience outside of like just right here. So it's always nice to to, to see that, to have that experience. And I suppose that in terms of national security, I know in terms of America at the moment, there's so many topics uh, going around in terms of that. But the whole sort of, you sort of flip a sort of a, a coin in sort of such in this, uh, I suppose in cert certain topics and sort of you try to bring a light sort of mellowed sort of humor in terms of certain topics and really take away the real sensitivity or the serious sensitivity nature to a certain sort of sort of subject and I suppose not trying people not trying people not to get lost in sort of translation as sort of such right, as well right sort of a good sort of a take in making something and what can be seen as a serious thing, sort of bringing it light, but not so, so stepping across the boundary either. Right. What's interesting is that, you know, for years we've heard, and I don't think it's true, but we've heard certain movies don't sell abroad. And one of them was uh, comedy because it's not, it doesn't always translate. Like the British sense of humor is different than the American sense of humor, things like that. And so you don't know what people will, actually re respond to and so it's really lovely to see that like you guys in Ireland love national security like it's it's incredible because you really don't know like are these are these jokes very specific are they very regional are they very like not only just American but maybe they're very Californian you know what I, and, and it's kind of nice to see that comedy can translate like you always hear that that action films do well because action is the same all uh, the, the world over, but that drama and comedy are a little more specific and a little more difficult to sell. And so it's interesting to see like when, when a, an international audience picks up on something and, and loves it. And so that was the same with Hitch as well, because that was a, a comedy and it did really, really well abroad. And so I, th I, I, think, I think people can appreciate, I think, it, I mean, national security is more of a broad comedy. It's not very like, you know, specifics, not like a romantic comedy, but I think it's really lovely to see people appreciate it in different parts of the world. And I suppose in terms of um, your husband uh, on the, your no, um, your um, boyfriend on the show, uh, the Steve Zayn sort of character as well, uh, just going back on Hank, Hank Rafferty as sort of, mm -hmm. uh, when Earl comes into his life, it seems like it's an absolute train wreck everything that can go wrong in Hank's life sort of goes wrong and he's sort of clinging on to hold everything that he's worked so hard to dear to right. stability and everything Earl touches turns to sort of poison and it almost feels like that when Earl sort of takes away you uh, Denise from Hank that it's just going to send Hank, Hank just goes over the edge and just start yeah. to lose start to plot <laughs> First of all, the only one thing that's in order to keep Hank's sanity going, and probably Earl realizes that uh, if he does, if Hank doesn't have you in terms of his stability, everything that happens to him, that's Hank. Uh, typical, the ending will go over a cliff, but it's almost like Hank will go over a, a cliff if he doesn't get the knees back into his life. And Earl probably doesn't realize that. That first, he doesn't realize probably the seriousness of your relationship. Relationship, right? Yeah. And I, and I think, I mean, I like that. I love that, love those layers of it. It was just, it was really nice. And, and I, and I felt, I don't want to say it was ahead of its time, but it, it's definitely stood the test of time. So that's good to hear. And do you still stay in contact as a, as Kat? You mentioned there your relationship. No, you no, know, I didn't. I actually ended up working with Steve on a TV show a few years back, like in 2013. So maybe, you know, 12 years after we shot uh, national security and it was great seeing him again and working with him again and then also reminiscing about that movie and the experience of it because it was like it was so long ago <laughs> but also it was different because Martin was also at the top of his game and so he was like a he was like a big star I think he might have gotten like 20 million for that movie or something like that but he was considered like a big movie star then um, and so when you have someone like that on, on the set it it's 
you know, it changes dynamic a bit. It's not, an, it wasn't, an, it's not an ensemble cast. It's very much like, this is a star and we're all kind of, we're in his orbit and we don't want to, <laughs> we don't want to like mess anything up for him. Um, so it was, it was, it was very different, but it was a lot, it was a great learning experience and it was a lot of fun. And I can't say enough great things about working with Steve and Dennis, the director, who was like, very much had a vision was very specific but lighthearted too like not I mean obviously it's comedy so he's not going to be like really really serious but it was just he was just a nice guy to work with and I suppose uh Denise uh we mentioned I suppose we but we've talked an awful lot about Steve Zane and Martin Lawrence but I suppose we have to pay homage to the supporting cast as well I mean you had the likes of Colin Fiore there you had the likes of Bill Dew Eric yeah. Robert Roberts Denise. You marry Morrow, uh, T Timothy Bushfeld as well. But right. when you think about Colum Fiore, Bill Duke, Ari Eric Roberts, the name is they're headliners in their own in South right. State. Absolutely, absolutely. Movies as well. So the interaction with South State. So you mentioned about learning from Steve Zane and learning from um. He didn't have he didn't have scenes with the others. I'm trying to think. Like even in that last courtroom scene. I didn't, I was really just with Steve. I mean, for the most part, like I wasn't really, I didn't really have very much exchange with the other, other any, the other actors. So it's, it's so funny, you do a movie and people associate with people, but it's like, you never, you see that you meet them at the, at the premiere. <laughs> it's like, and it's like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. Great work. But it's like, I, it's, they're like distant. It, but it's funny, I saw Bill Duke at an event last summer, last winter. And I introduced myself and I was like, we were in national security together. And he was like, oh my gosh, because I hadn't seen him since, I don't know, in 10, 15 years. And, and the last time I saw him was at another like event, but but we were never on set together. Really. And I, I suppose that uh, Robin, in terms of, uh, you mentioned there about uh, national security and uh, as time goes by and the sort of years go by and you build up a resume, and you get on to sort of several sort of projects uh, throughout your decade. You sort of still, re you go through so much body of work in terms of TV episodes, movies, series. Uh, it's very hard to remember them all, but I suppose there's probably highlights that probably stand out and golden ones. And is the National Security one of those for you to say, yeah, that's in my top 10, that's in my top five? That means um, that's a face that it holds to me. There are, there are different parts of it that stand out. The audition will always stand out for me probably more than most other auditions because it was one of my first big ones. And because I felt really, really good about it in the room. Um, and so that part stands. And then, and then the having to go back and go back, like the, the getting the part stands out to me. And then just that time there, I guess, hanging out with Steve, he was, he was an anti-Hollywood like hero kind of thing. He didn't live in LA, he didn't live in New York. He lived out like on a farm in New Jersey and he had a wife and animals. And I think the wife was pregnant. Maybe they had one baby then or she was pregnant while we were shooting, something like that. But it was like, it was really interesting to see someone live completely off the beaten path. And he was doing something then that we're all doing now, but no one was doing back then is that he would put himself on, a, on tape for auditions. Like if he had an audition, that was important, like in LA or New York, he would put himself on tape and, and like mail it, physically mail the tape. This is before you could really upload it to a secure site. And so um, I thought like, that was, that's amazing. What a, what a novel idea that you can live anywhere in the world you want to and, and still be considered for big projects. Of course, with COVID especially, we're all auditioning on, t on tape now, online and then like uploading it. But he was the first person I knew who was doing that and like as a way of life, like he didn't want to be part of the craziness in here. He wanted to kind of have his own life. And, and that, yeah, that stood out for me because I felt like he was such a model, like a role model for what it would be like to be a, a celebrated, renowned actor, a well-known and respected actor, but still not give in to the Hollywood game. And I thought that was really interesting. I suppose, uh, Robin, I suppose, lastly, to finish off uh, before I let you go, in terms of uh, national security now, let's pretend someone wrote a book or uh, an encyclopedia or a dictionary, and they put your character, Denise, into that dictionary. And they came along to you and said, listen, with Denise here in the dictionary, 
We have two blank sentences left, left underneath. Here you go, Robin Lee. Write those two sentences in terms of your portrayal as Denise. What would you like Denise uh, to read? Oh my um, oh, oh God. that's a good question, Jim. Um, <laughs> a vibrant, sensitive, loving, genuine, but um, take no prisoner woman. There you go. <laughs> Just while I was doing that, one other question popped into my head that I sort of forgotten that. In terms of uh, national security, was there ever a talk sort of in the pipeline of a, a second sort of movie? Or did you always feel that that was a movie that stood on its own in terms of the test of time? You've seen sort of those like Anchorman, which is a legendary movie. Right, right. To, right. It didn't sort of go to that much success. Do you ever feel that national security, do you get the sense coming off that, this is great, we don't need to touch this, we don't need to go back here again, or was there any talk to the second sort of one? Because I imagine like you would have brought in savage numbers and box money and revenue. At the, right. the I don't remember there ever being talk of a second one. Even when we were shooting, I don't think there were, no one was saying, oh, this we can set this up as a series, or wouldn't we love to see Mike and Hank, what Mike, his name's Mike, right? Yeah. Um, years line or whatever like I, I think they were kind of like it was a standalone film and and that's it I mean I think yeah I, I, I don't know and you'd have to talk to the director or writer to know if whether or not they even entertain the idea of doing more but I don't think so and I, and I think they were kind of like it's a, it was a full story beginning middle end it didn't have to it didn't have to continue of course sometimes the demand is there and so they make it work but. And would you be open to a sort of a sequel uh, now, a sort of game, if the role was sort of interesting? I would, I would. It's been a, yes. long, time, it's been a long time. But as I said, working with Steve was one of the greatest pleasures of the, my career, and I would be more than happy to work with him again. So sign me up. And Martin's always good for a few laughs. <laughs> on that note, uh, Robin Lee, an absolute pleasure talking to you today to relive your time on national security. This week's cult classic movie, way, way back, dare I say, you know, 17 years ago. To, I'm getting old. <laughs> we're all getting the, old, and we're all getting old. <laughs> 2003 for your role as uh, Denise. Uh, Robin, in these uh, troublesome times, uh, stay safe, uh, stay well to you and your loved ones, and best luck and a prosperous uh, 2021 to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Thank you.